Good morning, everyone. Thank you, j Rell, for having the camera up. I understand if you're uh, driving. Hi. If you're if you're driving or naked, you don't need to have the camera on. But uh, if it's none of those, please turn your camera on so we can see your lovely faces. So we're gonna get started as soon as I quiet down the uh, the room. All right. Well, let's kick it off, everybody. Go ahead and find your seat. While everybody's finding their seat, let's kick it off with a tell me something good. I know there's some tell me something goods in the room. And so if you don't say it, I will I will call you out. Yeah, that you're one of the tell me something goods. So I passed my real estate test. <laughs> On Tuesday, so anybody knows a good team that's looking for <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, let's go to Primos tonight and celebrate. Absolutely. Yeah. It celebrates right. for two days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who else has to tell me something good? A new lead, a new, a new closing. Um, we had an open house on Saturday, and I found a client who was looking for a house immediately, and so Boom. I took him to go look at three houses on Monday. We put an offer, and with their financing, Alicia was so creative, did Cal Peppa. I was super nervous because we had to do a $10,000 credit from the seller at closing. I was freaking out. She's like, you can do this. You can crush this, and I did, and we're waiting to receive an acceptance today. All right, one more, one more. Who's got something else? All right, so uh, my team actually has more deals in escrow than I do. That's a win. That's a win. Other people are succeeding. Cool. All right, well, with that, oh, by the way, mine's Elena. I don't know if she's on the call or not, but we have a new team member that joined our team. She joined EXP and she just joined our team. So our team's Elena growing. Joined Elena joined. Thank, Thank you, Monty. You. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Elena. Um, she is. Um, Real quick, so not every day is good. Not every hand went up and I'll tell me something good. I understand that, but I heard this quote today by James Clare and I wanted to share it. Um, the antidote to a bad day is a good workout, right? And so that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be sweating, pumping iron, but maybe just go for a walk by yourself. Go for a walk with your spouse, with the dog. Just do something to get your body moving. And then at the end of that day, it may have been a horrible day, but at least you accomplished something. So the antidote to a bad day is a good workout. You know, Johnny, uh, I just saw a thing with Elon Musk. On the back of his jacket that he was wearing, it had a picture of broken glass. And you know what that references? It's that big thing that would have been horrible. They threw a, threw a, uh, the, a silver the ball bearing truck. at his bulletproof truck and broke the glass. Yep. What does he do? He turns it into a joke and wears it on his jacket. Uh, what was could it would have been for me like the worst day ever. He turns it into a joke and wears it on his jacket. Yep. That's the difference. Right? He embraced it, yeah. Failure's not a bad thing. So Alicia, I see you handed out some updated uh, yes. flyers. Who doesn't have one? You don't have one? So you want me to explain it really Absolutely, quick? yeah, just give us a, a lender update. So just from last week to this week, loan limits have changed. And so we now can go up to 625 on the conforming loan limits. So it gives your buyers more buying power that couldn't qualify for jumbo. Um, I'm going to give a quick testimonial because I added on the back of here, again, this is for your card. I added 25 topics for videos for you guys to do marketing. Mr. Monty crushed it last week, did a video. We got a client, got her pre-qualified. She's officially ready to shop just from his video we sent out. I think it was Thursday or Friday. Awesome. So, awesome. <laughs> I do want to say uh, Scott has now joined our team. He's just like a lot of you. He just got his license. Super excited, super hungry, and ready to rock open houses with you. So if you do have open houses, I'll watch on the uh, BrightGo Facebook page. But yeah, he's ready to give you guys some company. So Scott and Jared are going to be best friends. Scott and Jared. Yeah. All right. Now, real quick, I see a lot of a lot of top producing agents in the room. Is it, was that it, Alicia? I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, the only last thing I do want to throw out there is rates did go up, guys, about a half a percent. So not a little bit, a substantial amount. Why is this magical for you? And you need to call all of your buyers. Hey, guys, I just want to reach out. Rates went up a little bit. I have good and bad news about this. The good news is, is it's going to cut out your competition. A lot of people are going to go, oh, well, we'll just wait till next year. It's the holidays. 
right? Mm -hmm. So if you're tenacious, it's not going to be that big of a difference in your payment. At this point, now that sellers are freaking out because there's less offers, now we can ask for closing cost credits and we're getting them. That'll offset it and we can buy your rate down anyways to what it was. So I want to encourage you to get out there looking with me because now we can get you better deals than we could before this happened. So turn it into a positive and make it a reason to call your clients so they don't hear from the news and get scared. Does yep. that make sense? Yep. And we'll go into that more today about what's happening in the market. But before I share some resources with you, I would like to hear from other agents. What are you seeing in the market aside from the increased interest rates? Like Darcy? So I have a listing in Rockland that was 550, got five offers. Got one all cash, no contingencies. So that was super cool. I've never seen an offer like that. So I was excited to get that many offers, but I have one that's 1.55. I've shown it 11 times in the last two days, and everybody wants to come in a couple hundred grand under asking. So it's kind of interesting the two different, you know, mindset. Yeah, it seems to be a market signal. Yeah, the yeah. Higher, the higher is coming in lower. The higher is coming in lower. Yeah. Coming in yeah. <laughs> what area is the 1.5? Like pen ring, like booming. My girlfriend went in college. I know. <laughs> but I'm it I she? Oh, good. I think they see everybody. It's a visionary home yeah. and a dreamer home, and people come out there and they get really excited. And then they realize the numbers of mm -hmm. a 1.5, 1.6 million dollar home, and it freaks them out. So it's a lot of agent support and guiding them along. I have three coming on. I have one in Roseville. If anybody's interested, I can get you in any time. Um, under 700, one in Rockland, under 600, and one in Grass Valley. Five neighbors. Uh -huh. Under five. Oh, what? Yeah. What's that code? Your grocery one. Nine five seven four seven. It's a lovely area of West Roseville. It's Grass Valley Horse Property. It is Horse Property. It has a care of a driveway. I don't know if you can. Oh no, we got stuck in one in Placerville for two hours. So it might be the worst driveway we were yesterday. I don't know. You need to drive because I might have to be towed out of the driveway. Oh no. Real quick, Darcy, where, where you, you just rattled off three listings. How did you find those clients? Okay, so um, let me see here. One is from a long time ago, a mom friend I've just stayed in contact with. The other one is a referral, and this is my second home selling with her. And then the other one was funny. They were referred to me, and I went with another agent on my team that he knew them, and they're like, you know, we're shopping other agents. We're not sure about <laughs> And I was like, oh, like have to be competitive here. I was expecting like it was our, you know. Right and right. so then I'm like, boom, here's my resume. Boom, and I'm like, Rrr. and then we like attack it. And then they're like, okay, choose you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome. So we're like trying to blow the socks off that. So, so mostly sphere though is where they were coming all from. All sphere. Right. Yeah. All yeah. Awesome. We all, so we all have spheres. Some are, may not be having $1.5 million listings like Darcy, but we all have spheres and they all produce closings. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and spheres cost nothing. Right. Cindy, what are you seeing in the market? Um, seeing less offers on all the listings. I mean, all my listings are still going pending within three days. Um, but, you know, they generally are only going about 15000 over asking instead of fifty to seventy five. Yeah. Um, but I prepared all my sellers for that. And so they all know, hey, this isn't spring anymore. You're, we're back to what we were getting. Well, some of them are investors, so we do houses every year. So I'm like, it's back to the normal way it used to be. So I think just setting those expectations for your sellers, um, because if they're looking at your comps that we're going to be pulling right now, they are from spring. Mm -hmm. And they, they're not going to get those prices anymore. Yeah. Um, but we're still, you know, I was shocked still my listings. I'm still having people come in removing their contingencies, which... I'm shocked if I'm not writing offers or moving contingencies anymore and still getting my offers accepted. So I think that some agents out there still think it's spring and it's great for us listing the houses because they're like, sure, we'll take your offer over asking with, you know, two contingencies removed. Yep. Um, so that's what, you know, I'm really seeing. Um, I think it's just getting back to a normal market. I still think it's a great seller's market. I still think it's a great buyer's market. Um, like Darcy was saying, I think it's really important that we get in touch with our referrals are past clients. Um, like today, I'm going out with one of my clients. I met her four years ago. Just to give you an example of how important it is, I met her four years ago from a builder. Um, since I've met her, I've sold three properties for her. She referred me to another friend who I've sold four properties for. Wow. Who then referred me to another friend who sold two, and that one's just sold me two. So that one client gave me all those deals in the last four, four years. So it's we're just going out to lunch. It's just important to stay in touch with those clients, whether it's coffee or out to lunch, um, because girls do have babies. Last yeah. Time. Yeah. <laughs> 11 in your case. It's freaking cool.
So, okay, so what we're seeing is a slight slowdown, not too bad though. What I pulled some data from the MLS and uh, listings for September. So we, the numbers aren't out for October yet, but from August to September, we're seeing a 10% increase in inventory. And this is across all of Metro lists, right? This isn't like Rockland or Penryn or some small market, but 10% increase. And that's up 36% from last year. So year over year, that's up 36%, but we're still at 1.1 months of inventory. Right, and it's it's a seller's market. If it's typically below three, like a strong seller's market below three, and we're barely at one. So there are more, but it's still super tight out there. Um, so it's a good time to be selling or buying. Did you have a? Oh, I just wanted to throw out there. It is like overwhelming how many of my clients that were uh, didn't have the greatest credit. They were difficult. Period. They're just difficult clients, right? They're all coming out of the woodwork right now. Mm -hmm. which is really good because they won't get you they're loyal as heck they're grateful and they're now that there isn't as much competition if you followed up with them they're always willing they're the ones that are like yeah you know so just keep that in mind because we had um like i've gotten 18 weeks since friday and yeah and it's mostly people who needed work and they're like we did our homework we're ready so re reach out to anyone that wasn't quite ready then and i bet you will be ready now mm -hmm. And they can still be in the house before the holidays, yes. right? So that's, you can push that, push that. Um, real quick, I read this quote. Let me share the screen. If I can remember how to do that. I live on Zoom and that you forget. So who here has read Atomic Habits by James Clear, right? Fantastic book, highly recommend it. He has a free newsletter that I pay for <laughs> it's free. anybody can pay for it it's free and he and he, so he sends us out every thursday and i just wanted to share this there's a difference between moving fast and rushing you can move fast and be thought and be thoughtful when you rush you sacrifice thoughtfulness conversely when you are thoughtful but not moving fast you are overthinking it procrastination in disguise don't rush but don't wait and then if i scroll to the bottom what if you stopped trying to think your way through and started trying to act your way through it? And what that has to do with, to, with uh, what I wanted to cover with today is we need to be making your calls. Like you, you, need, you need to be doing your outbound prospecting now. This is when a lot of people slow down and they, they take their foot off the, break, off the gas and just start coasting in, into the holidays. What you do now will pay you in 90 days. If you wanna have a strong January and a strong February, start like do your calls today. So what we're doing, and Cliff's going to talk on this in a second. He used to be an ISA for Tom Daves, and he's a fantastic insurance agent. So I won't steal all of his thunder. But at least, it, like Barry, last year in December, you started doing 10, 10 a day, right? So in November, I had nothing working, no, nothing at all in the pipeline. And I started doing 10 conversations a day. And what we do a tracker right now, it's on my desk right now. And in February, by the end of February, I had closed 17 deals. There you go. Right. And that was just 10 calls a day. So if 10 is overwhelming to you, do two, right? Do five. You don't, you don't have to do 10, but if you do nothing, you're going to pay for it. And you're going to, you're going to be regretting when you're hearing the Darcy's or the Cindy's or the Berries or the other people that are selling houses in this room for wondering why, I'm, why am I not doing it? Because you didn't call people. You didn't, you didn't prospect. Two, if, if 10 conversations is uncomfortable for you, maybe it's okay to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Right. If you want to start making money on it and you're not understanding why, you got to be a little truthful with yourself on it. And how many conversations are you truly having in a day? Right. You might be doing a lot of busy work, but is it the busy work that's actually going to be paid? Yep. Right. Just because you're busy doesn't mean you're making money. Part time and admit that you're part time and move on. Yeah. Yep. So when you're having those conversations, what are you going to say? A lot of people. Here, the number one thing I'm hearing right now, and if anybody has heard something different, please chime in, but it's like, what is happening in the market? Is it a good time to buy? Should I wait till the spring? Our price is going to go down. Our interest rate is going to go up. They want to know. And so the, first off, people have to like you, right? But more, but, really. then, but then after that, <laughs> but you can overcome that. You can overcome that, right? Most people, it's easier if they like you, but you can overcome that. It's an easier row. You get more referrals if they like you, Barry. Um, but if you're knowledgeable, you have to. So if, if they call you and say, hey, what's happening in the market? Hey, is, are you seeing more houses? Are, do you think it's going to dip in the spring or in the, in the fall or in the winter? And you're like, mm, I don't know. I can get back to you on that. 
like instantly you just lost all credibility with that, that individual. And so what, here's something that's absolutely free that you can do. It's called keeping current matters. Love that. I subscribe to it. They send you something every single weekday. And who, who here is already using Keeping Current Matters? Yeah, it's KCM. Okay, so just a handful. So this is this is new information for a lot of you. But it, look, here's the subject lines. Uh, you know, 111,000 reasons why you should buy a home this year. Early October is a sweet spot for buyers. Uh, did you see this? As home equity rises, so does your wealth. What does... Uh, supply and demand tell us about today's housing market. These are the things that your clients want to know about. And so what's incredible about keeping current matters, why this is not like 2008 again. How many of you are hearing that, right? Prices are too high. I'm waiting for the crash and I'll buy two houses for the price of one, right? Yeah, and, but and here's why. And so rather than just telling them, you can take screenshots and you can text them this information and you can share with them from an educated point of view. You can let them discover for themselves why you know that this is not like 2008 and the bet and if nothing else the easiest thing in the world is you can just highlight it copy and paste it into a newsletter highlight it and copy and paste it in email you're not stealing it from keeping current matters this is what they want you to do this is this is why they exist they do, they do have a paid service i don't pay for it it's 40 dollars a month super affordable but I, don't, I use the free version and i get a lot out of it but again it. that you pay for it, I pay for it as well. so um yeah. <laughs> well, if they do, they'll do automatic custom for you. you they will. Your they will. They'll integrate with your social. Yeah. Um, and they provide a monthly statement that is is really incredible. And it's the other thing I like about them is they they speak in my voice. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of a numbers guy, an investor guy, and they speak in my language. It's as if it's the same way I would do it if I was going to do it. They're smarter. Yeah. So, would yeah. it be okay to make videos on that topic? Absolutely. Like yeah. now that you've seen this, now that if you if you subscribe and start getting the graphs and the charts and the emails, you'll notice a lot of agents. That's where they're pulling their information from. You're like, oh wow, that's crazy. How did they make that? It's like, no, they just copy and pasted it from Keeping Current Matters. <laughs> right? So, um, so take so move move fast, right? But it goes back to that James Clear topic. Don't wait. Take action today. It's free. Like some the, there are some people in this room who I hope are on their phone that are signed up for Keeping Current Matters, right? And taking action. Because if you don't do it today, you'll forget by tomorrow. And then when I tell you in a couple months, hey, who, who, who here has signed up for Keeping Current Matters, a free tool that everybody should be using, and the same three hands go up, it's probably going to be the same three hands that are selling houses. Okay? Yeah. Hey, quick question. So, How do you sign yeah. up for the free one? All I see is the paid. So where is that? Yeah. Yeah. So you, I don't, it's been a while. I've been using them for a couple of years. I'm but... on their site right now. And I... So, Sorry, you guys hear a golden retriever breathing heavy. I'm pretty sure it's still, I mean, I don't pay for it. No, I think you still have to get an account, though. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so just sign account. up for the free trial and, or, I yeah, don't know. and then just go from there. Yeah, start, okay. start a free okay. trial. The free okay. trial is going to give you access to everything, but then, um, let's. Card, right? Is that the free trial period is over? No, you can go to the blog part and they'll let you sign up just for the blog. Okay. Yeah, it's just so this is like this is like all the stuff that Barry was talking about. It is it is paid for, but if you just want the blog, okay, you, go to the blog. You can get those emails. Great, thank you. I'll post that. Oh wow! You can set it up to work. If you pay for it, you can set it up for every day. They'll post something. To you oh yeah, there's time. a there's a box there. Send me these posts. So that sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think they do, but I'm not. I don't want to tell you they do. One thing I ask you is a lot of RSS on your site. I don't know. I think you can do an RSS feed though. That would be good. Okay. Yeah. One thing they they do that I've tried to use a lot to to start trying to generate some leads and business. See, they got they publish every quarter. Seller's guide, the buyer's guide. Yep, yep. you print that and out. Give you, you can print it out, but they'll also give you a personalized website that you can direct people to, download the book, and then you'd ask them for their email address, yeah. and contact so, information, and cool. then they get to download the free, free book. And then yeah. you get that lead or whatever. And you get that Correct. It's a lead. So they're providing a lead map magnet for you. Yep. But at the end of the, so the reason why I brought it up, there's so many cool features about keeping current matters. 
but you need to be educated about what's happening in the market and you need to be able to articulate your knowledge in a way that the consumer wants to hear. And these graphics, these, these emails, they're absolutely gold. Like these are worth thousands of dollars to you and you can do and you can send them out for free. They're definitely pro real estate. And they're hundred percent pro real estate. Yeah. yeah. It's not like wait. There's never like a wait. Why you should wait to buy a house. <laughs> yeah. Why you should why you should sell your house by yourself without a real estate. There's no, there's nothing like that. Um, real quick, we're moving on. We got Mr. Cliff Hinkle. Yeah, man. Okay. How's everybody doing? Um, question for you guys. How many people are actually new agents like under two years? Okay. So this is going to be relevant for you guys. So I used to be an ISA for Tom Davis. You guys know who he is, right? Man is. Okay. So he paid me to fund his listing machine. All I did for eight hours a day was I had a dialer and I cold called, circle dialed, and I loved my best part was calling expires. I didn't have a license. Didn't know anything about real estate. <laughs> Nothing. And you're calling expires. And I'm going up against people like Darcy and Cindy and Johnny, like people that have been trained to sell real estate. And I'm trying to talk to them about why they need a list with Tom, with no experience <laughs> at all. I'm talking, I, I didn't do anything, okay? Here's what I learned from doing that, is that it is a habit. There's a fear of prospecting. It's a, it's a mindset. If you can get past the mindset of the rejection and understand a no just isn't a no, a no just means not yet. Build a relationship and add value. Just be a person that can be a conduit to add value and be a person that can solve problems. The more problems that you can solve, the more money you're gonna make. Case in point, the only reason why I'm in this room is this lady here and that lady there. Yeah. Okay. They had a problem. They had a listing that was, it was, your fire fire. Zone. It was in a fire zone in Applegate. Mm -hmm. She posted on Facebook. Yeah. I hear you guys all talking about social media and posting and everything like this. You have to take action. He showed up at my office. And I right. <laughs> he just showed but up. how many people actually posted and sent you Instagrams and emails and phone calls sure. and text messages? probably 15 or 20 people. Yeah. And I was like, pardon my French, F this. Yeah. I'm going to go show up. <laughs> and guess what happened? God opened up the door, the doors aligned. And yeah. I walk in, I'm like, all right, God, you know what? Make this work. I walk in and who's there? The person that's representing the buyer <laughs> and the person that's doing the financing. And I'm the person that can do the insurance and solve the problem. So just take action. Don't worry about social media. Don't worry about all that. Just pick up the phone literally pick up the phone. You can literally go walk out to Walmart, walk out to Macy's and go, hi, my name's Cliff. Do you know anybody that's looking to buy or sell real estate? Mm -hmm. If you have ever met Tom Davis, that's his famous line. Do you know anybody that's looking to buy or sell real estate? He had every single person from the convict and FedEx guy to the water <laughs> person, every person that walked into his office, if you stepped in his three foot sphere, he asked that one question. Do you know anybody that's looking to buy or sell real estate? It's a simple question. Yeah. And I was talking to Johnny, look at it this way, guys. You have a deck of cards, right? 52 cards in a deck. How many aces? Four. Four. Do not try to convert a king into an ace. Look for the aces. That's all you gotta do. If you have a queen, don't worry about the queen. Just accept them for who they are, love them for who they are, and go find an ace. Because the ace is looking for you and you're looking for them, just be that person that's willing to be tenacious enough to go out there and ask enough questions. That's all you gotta do, okay? Love it. Question for you guys. How many people refer insurance? I don't know why every single hand should not go up to yeah. refer insurance. And here's why. I'm not here to try to get you guys a business. I know eventually you'll give me your business because we helped you on one of your listings, okay? Um, and that was in Lake Wildwood. Okay, so I want to give you guys a few different quick calculations. So when you guys are working with your buyers to know exactly what kind of coverage you should have. So the dwelling coverage is going to cover the house. You guys work off price per square foot, correct? When you guys look at listings, price per square foot is the same calculation that we use for insurance. 
So any home should have a minimum of 250 a square foot, 250, that, $250 a square foot. So take 250 times your square footage, and that's how much the dwelling should be. Very simple. So if you see that it's coming in at $200 a square foot, know that that agent is purposefully underinsuring that property, 100%. And what they're going to try to trick you to do is use that extended dwelling coverage. Because a lender will use the dwelling plus extended dwelling coverage, both of those together, they can fund their loan. But just know for your client's sake, 250 a square foot, if you're dealing with Granite Bay, you're dealing with Loomis, no less than $300 a square foot. If you're going up into the foothills in the high fire area, $300 a square foot minimum. I don't care what kind of house it is, even if it's a POS home, 250, because you will have a total loss. I promise you, you will have a total loss. Last time I was here, I talked about the California Fair Fund, right? <clears throat> I had a client that just lost his house in the Calvary Fire. I'm talking completely devastated, down to the ground. He watched his house burn on Green Central. Okay. Aww. So imagine having that kind of a conversation with the client, not only dealing with him losing his house, now I have to explain to him how the California Fair Fund pays out, which it doesn't pay out as well as you guys think it should pay out. Okay. They only paid him out 50% of his dwelling up front. They paid him out 30% on his personal property. Wow. And they gave him a list and said, we need you to inventory every single thing inside your house, dates of purchases, when you purchased it, where you purchased it, and serial numbers of your items. And you have three years to provide this to us. If you don't provide this to us, you will only get 30% max. So do, your, do yourself a favor, every single person that has homeowner's insurance, even if you have a condo, do this. Take a video camera, videotape your whole entire house. Yeah. Just take a video, just videotape it, send it to the cloud. That way, in the event, if it ever does happen, you have a loss, you have something you can recall to you and go, oh yeah, that's right, I had five TVs. Okay. Good news is the insurance commissioner did put a grouping together for clients. If you guys do have a total loss, they don't have to itemize it. They can just say five TVs, here's the amount. But it is a pain in the butt. So if you guys have any questions, my assistant's Marcy right here. I just hired her. Hi. So my goal for you guys is any listings that you guys have, I'll run quotes on every single listing that you guys have. I don't care how many it is, I'll run every single one. You guys should know what the cost of the insurance is gonna be. And if you do have a quote and it's past 60 days and there's a recent fire, like the Calvary fire, get a revised quote. Okay, because I promise you, it's most likely there is going to be a moratorium. Areas that you can still write insurance in is 95602, right in the smack dab of Auburn. Okay, anything on the south side of Auburn, you're probably not going to be able to write insurance. Um, everything in Nevada City and everything in Grass Valley, Wolf, uh, Wolf Mountain Road, Lime Kiln Road, um, all of Lake of the Pines, Lake Wildwood, all of that, you can still find standard insurance. Two companies that are writing is MetLife and State Farm. State Farm will write it, yes. Okay, I have a State Farm rep. If you guys need any contacts, they'll run the address and they'll let you know right off the bat if the house is acceptable or not. And State Farm is the only company that will accept any type of dogs, no matter what. No. Yes, and they will take horses. <laughs> wow. Lots of horses. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, so that's just a calculation for you guys. The other coverage that you guys wanna make sure that you have, is if they are on city water, make sure they have what's called water backup. That's an optional coverage that's selected on the policy. Um, that's usually gonna cost them about 10 to about 12 bucks a month to add it on. What that covers is if any of those city lines back up and you get raw sewage coming up through your toilet. Yeah. I promise you there's no way that you can clean that. That is completely replaceable, yeah. okay? If it is not on the policy, there's absolutely positively no coverage at all none second one is personal injury so personal injury covers slander libel and defamation of character so think of anything you may say or post with your words especially in social media you can deal with personal injury that's going to cost you honestly about 20 bucks a month or 20 bucks a year <laughs> super cheap <laughs> slander. slander libel and defamation of character okay it's going to cost about 20 bucks a year. Okay. That is the only exclusion on your personal liability coverage on your home insurance policy. That is not covered. It is a complete exclusion. You have to add that on and then make sure that they do the extended replacement coverage at 50%. Super cheap. 
super easy to do. So 250 a square foot for their dwelling coverage, add water backup. If they're on septic, you don't need it because septic is not covered on water backup. It's only on city lines, okay? And if you guys have any questions or anything like that, just give me a call for any of your buyers. All we need is just literally, I don't even need the name. I, I can work with so little information. Just give me an address. If you wanna give me John Smith, 50 years old, 40 years old, I'll give you guys a quote, send it to your client. If your client says, wow, that's pretty competitive, then just have them get in contact with me, okay? You can talk to Darcy, you can talk to Alicia. I, I don't try to pressure your guys' clients because they're your clients. My job is to protect your guys' reputation and the value that you guys offer to your clients. Very good. Uh, when you do quotes up front, I have two listings yep. in Forest Hill on an acre that I'm yes. sure and have fire insurance. Actually, one of them Forest know Hill sure. actually may not. So that's why I'm confused. One of my clients were selling it because of the fire Where's insurance. Where's that in Forest so Hill? High. Um, it is. Okay. But one says she doesn't have fire insurance if she's on an acre, and the other one's down the street. Theirs is uh, was nine. Now it's down to six grand okay. a year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, it doesn't make sense because the one that has the insurance has two fire hydrants on the property. Like, so I'm just not even understanding what's going on for it right now. <laughs> do you want me to answer that? Yeah, question? man. Yes. Yes. Please do. So the, the fire hydrants and the fire stations, um, I know that there's a lot of people who are like, oh my gosh, there's a fire hydrant or a fire station. They'll send me pictures. It's irrelevant anymore. It's relevant, but it's irrelevant. It's one of those ambiguous things. Um, what they're doing right now is obviously we've had two wildfires, the Caldor fire and the Dixie fire. In the state's history, we have never had a wildfire ever go over the summit. Ever. Ever, guys. And we just had two wildfires that completely went over the summit. Okay. So that just shows you what's going to happen is just like you're going to get a belt you're going to start feeling the tightness of that belt yeah. on the insurance. You're going to start feeling it even here in the city. Okay. So you're going to start seeing insurance costs go up. So if you're seeing people paying 1500 bucks a year for a home here in the Roseville area, don't think that they're overpaying. It's just going to start being, this is going to be the new normal. Okay. Um, they're going on a case by case basis. The biggest thing that they're looking at is defensible space. They want to have hundred feet of defensible space. And I'm talking in every single direction of the house. So you can have three quarters of the property defensible space, but you have one side of the house that has 25 feet of defensible space, it's automatic decline. Are you talking about acreage or are you talking about subdivisions? Subdivisions, acreage, a anywhere. Um, mostly it's gonna be going up in the foothills is where that's gonna be going into. Um, here in the city, like Roseville, Rockland, um, Citrus Heights, you shouldn't be running into things like that. Where you'll run into that is Loomis, Penryn, Newcastle, okay? Um, and then Los Lagos. Los Lagos, you can still write. MetLife will write all of Los Lagos for you guys, okay? Um, there are just certain restrictions, so yes. Um, so I have this listing, and I feel like if I have two more listings like this, I might just start thinking. <laughs> <laughs> It was like the black listing of this year. Um, so I, um, we were getting ready to close. Everything okay. is clear. First, there were blockages every little day. And finally, I called the lender. I'm like, when are the locks going up? Well, they were denied insurance because the seller had filed insurance claim in the past. There were two claims on the property. <laughs> so the other insurance company that the new buyers were applying to, they just denied. They said, like, the seller had filed. There have been claims on this insurance. So I kind of like got them connected with my person that I do with some like, you know, give them a call, do something, I don't know. So now the insurance is $1,500 yeah. per yeah. house. $1,500? Where's that? Uh, it's not. Okay. Um, so kind of think of your claims history on a home, like your driving record. So your driving record, if you get into a ticket or an accident, it's not gonna follow a car, it's gonna follow you. The claims history follows the house. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important for us to run the clue report because we want to know is that house? We're not insuring the buyer, we're insuring the home. We want to ensure that, like a um, kept it water tank or um, plumbing. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I had a question about one of those today. Uh, those are awful. Okay. So we want to know is that house insurable or not? And if there's multiple claims on that house, 
most likely there's something defaulting with that home, which means that there's a probability that there's going to be another claim on that home. What will follow the client is liability claims. So that will follow them no matter where they're going to go. So there are ways to get exclusions. It just depends on the insurance companies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Any other questions? Yeah, any other questions for Cliff? Yes. Oh, uh, so Jennifer just. Uh, oh, yeah. So Cliff's info is on the chat box. We'll put it in the Facebook. And then Jennifer Santos, I always, always, always get an insurance quote on my listings. Oh, but tell her to the um, Lindsay Shaw property, Jen. We just rewrote it from the fair plan to MetLife. Okay. It yes. had to be rewritten with the Cal Fair, the extra fire insurance? We just canceled their fair plan today this month and we wrote it to MetLife. They were on a $7,000. So you saved them money? Yes. They're Yay, on a Yay, they're coming to my house tomorrow or Saturday. And they were now paying 3,500 bucks. Boom. Correct. So they're extremely excited and very happy. So if you guys have any questions, just give me a call. Um, you have my information. I brought Marcy here, okay? So the reason she's here is she's gonna be at the office when I'm out here talking. So if you guys have any questions, and you need a quote, text me, and she's going to do everything for me, okay? So if you guys have any questions, give me a call. I need a know. Marcy. All righty? Yay. All right. Thank thanks, you. Cliff. <laughs> All right. Since we have a little bit of time, Miss, I, there's another uh, preferred vendor in the room, Heather. Oh, hi, everyone. <laughs> would, you, would you mind giving? Oh, I, like I know. I know. <laughs> but we have time. You, are you open to sharing some information? Yeah, on? Yeah, okay. Just piggyback off the fear on everyone. Now, even if you are comfortable calling someone saying, hey, what do you know who wants to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Hey, what's your kid dressing as a Halloween? What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I yep. mean, we now it's just a fun type of call. So even if you're uncomfortable about having that real estate conversation, it's going to naturally go there anyway. But now it's a fun time of year. Cindy talks about it with a fun pot vibe. Like this is the, the fun time of year for all of that. So mm -hmm. That's just a friendly reminder. And as always, I can help with your stranger marketing, the farming, the postcards, but all of that. But uh, can you tell can you, for those who don't know, you mind you telling us uh, who you're with and yeah. going to the farm and stuff? So I'm Heather Durbro with Chicago Title. I'm a sales executive for them. So my job is to provide value to you guys in turn um, for your next stressful escrow when that when that happens. So I can definitely help with farming, finding likely next sellers, helping around open houses. Um, so any lead gen type thing, call your title company if you can help with them out. Perfect. And then do you have access to the Brent Go uh, team page? Yes. Okay. Would you mind just posting your information sure. on there so everyone knows? Okay. Perfect. Drew? The one thing to add, you know, especially um, with, you know, what Tom always asks everyone to be like, you know, know anyone that's looking to buy or sell, right? I, uh, I always like to... Um, put one more thing onto it. And I want to do a show of hands. Who here in the room likes to make money? Yeah. <laughs> right? So the last, the last part that I add to that, who, do you know of anyone who likes to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Mm -hmm. So especially for everyone that here, uh, if you ever have an issue with um, making those calls, um, excluding first time home buyers, right? Anyone that's you know, a little bit more established, it's always a great thing to ask them, like, have you ever thought about starting a portfolio, a real estate portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. How much are you making from passive income right now? And a lot of people will tell you nothing, okay? Have you ever thought about that? Okay, especially for the people that you're sitting there and you sold a house to a year ago or two years ago, or they say that they don't want to move at all, right? But they've been in their house for years, okay? Well, we all know that they're sitting on plenty, plenty, a month, right? Plenty of equity that they can sit there and take, you know, bring them to your uh, your local lender, and they can do a you know cash out refi and buy property to start building wealth. Okay, it's just another easy conversation to have with someone, especially if they have kids or anything like that. It's like, okay, so what what are you doing to start or continue your generational wealth? You know, what are you doing for your kids? for their college funds. Most people say, uh, I don't know, right? Because they don't teach us about money in school, right? But if you start learning about this, everyone 
that you can have a conversation with for the most part be the likes money like make the money would love to get free money or would like to do something for their kids long term right no, it's a very easy go. transition and it's a great thing to have it where i have plenty of time where like hey i'd love to sit down with you guys let's do a strategy session right let's maybe look at okay even if you're looking to buy you know to start your portfolio in a couple of years let's get you in touch with the right people that you know maybe you can utilize some of your equity that you're sitting on right you can turn someone into your database from a nothing sale to potential investor or at least you just grow your database and you grow your um, input to that there's always an angle always a way to help somebody help somebody rodney yeah I, I, to tag on what drew's saying there's a lot of great programs out there right now and 40 percent of the market is rental right yeah. and dscr so they don't have to qualify themselves are like concerned about doing that or qualifying and how that would happen debt service coverage ratio is what a lot of people are using right now and it's super easy the property qualifies for them. Rents are going up too. I've even heard people lately having rent like battle, right? And they want 2,500. No, I'll give you 26. I'll take 26. Literally that's starting to go on as well because rental inventory is that low as well. So you can get your people qualified if they're not getting qualified another way without their income. It's literally their FICO and the rent the property is going to receive, right? So it's super simple. The other thing, and one more motivating thing to get them off the fence, like was said earlier today, the market's a little softer, it's still strong, right? Just yeah. a little softer is that the, the seller can contribute into what I've talked about before, the temporary buy down, get them a 1% interest rate. But oddly, yesterday I was in a contract where a buyer was looking at a 30 year, you know, when 8.85, and he said, what's a, what's a 15? 1.75, both yeah. of those at no cost, right? No cost on the rate. So you can do that. Maybe you have a seller who has a great rate at three and a half today, might be the same as a payment at 1.75. So you can talk to them about changing their whole life, right? Yeah. The payment would be the same, 15 years cut off, and then maybe move them into the rental and something else. So it's all about structure and strategy with today's rates and programs and keeping them in front of them with that kind of stuff. Yeah, to take it right back on that, I've talked to people, uh, especially people with you know young kids, where if you were to take a 15 year mortgage and you buy a rental for each of your kids when they're young, by the time that they are in college, they go to college, you have a fully paid off house, right? Depending on what part you, you um, started at, right? So imagine you being able to sit there and you, your kid has a house of equity that it can either sell it or whatever they want to do. Um, to start their life out at 18 years old. Or pay their college tuition. Pay their college tuition. Yeah. And how much of a value that would be that you are bringing that option to someone to help them, to help their kids. Yeah. Right? Any of us that have kids in the room, if you help me, that's great. If you, if you help my kids, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Barry, and then we'll wrap it up. So one thing on that, generally the difference between a 15 and a 30 year is gonna be about a third of the payment. So if you know what the 30 year payment is, it'll be about a third higher of 15 year. It's kind of a rule of thumb that I've used. If the rate is there. If the rate is there. If you're saying. dropping that dramatically. Yeah. Um, so the other one is, uh -huh. is that the other thing I would say is that a common thing I'm getting right now is from buyers that say, oh, the market's getting ready to crash. The market's getting ready to change. I'm just gonna wait, yeah. right? So here's a little tidbit for you. 93% of the owners that are in forbearance right now have more than 10% equity in their property. That sounds familiar. Where'd you hear that? From? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Keeping Current Matters. Yeah. And yeah. here's another one that I didn't get this from Keeping Current Matters, but here's the other one. And this shows you there's a lot of potential opportunity out there. 30% of the borrowers that have more than 40% equity in their property still lose their homes to foreclosure. Mm -hmm. Guys, think about what I'm just saying. They didn't have to lose their home to foreclosure, but they did because you didn't tell them that they had another choice. Yep. They did because they buried their head in the sand. They did because they were busy with whatever it is they do for a living and forgot to go check on their house that was in foreclosure, or they thought this wasn't going to actually happen. So foreclosures still happen, and they happen with people in with equity. But most people, 93% of them, don't have to lose their homes. That's why you're not going to see a big drop correction like we did last time because we simply can sell the house. Yeah, they're not underwater. Okay, they're not underwater. Yeah.
All right, so with that, we're going to wrap up the meeting. Remember to sign up for Keeping Current Matters and make your calls and have a fantastic week, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for hopping in online. Congratulations.